Hello everyone, this is Hunter Steve here, and today we are going to be reviewing Ruby Volume 4, chap. No, wow, Volume 4, whoops. Uh, today we're going to be reviewing Ruby Volume 6, Chapter 4, so that's how it is. So, first off, I'm going to say it right here, it's just, now, you are going to be spoiled on the episode in full force. You're going to be spoiled, so if you haven't watched it, please... Go watch it at MoosesTeams.com, become, become a first member, so you can watch it right now, or you can just wait a week um, until next Saturday when episode 5 watch it for the first member, so then you can watch episode 4 for free without needing to spend money. All you have to do is create a membership and create an account, and then you just have to wait a week until the episode comes free for everyone. So... Yes, you will be spoiled, so leave now if you haven't seen episode 4 yet. Okay, so, episode 4. Uh, it's basically just an aftermath episode, a breather episode to what happened in episode 3, since we got in a lot of bombshells during uh, episode 3, with a lot of questions that we had since day 1 being answered, and... A lot of the team, because uh, we're going to be going into Team Ruby first, because that's where they start off with. Uh, we're going to see like their reactions to after the backstory of Salem, and basically what was us been hiding and what was going on. Um, so everyone's not taking it too lightly, especially Crow, going to the point of saying like, my worst luck was meeting you, which really hurt at Ospin to the point of this, like, leaving. Uh, to what extent of what he's leaving, we don't know. He's just gone right now. Like, he just pretty much locked himself away in the timeout corner, basically. And now Oscar is in full control at the moment, so we don't know when Ospin's going to be coming back or if he ever does, you know. Because this could mean that he may never want to return to a state like this where everyone is just pissed at him. And to be honest, they, they have every right to be really upset of what's going on. Because um, they just found it out that they are fighting an impossible battle. And because, you know, Salem's immortal. That's facts now. And just to see them all realizing that everything they've done it was pretty much been for nothing. Because even if they went to go take out Salem right now, they wouldn't. They would just die off. Okay, and that pretty much means like everyone that's fought with Ozpin before to go find Salem was all for nothing. Like some of those died for nothing. Like a lot of people that Ozpin trusted died for nothing. And it's really depressing to see the result of this. Uh, but then, of course, Maria Canavera comes in to be the voice of reason and say, hey, we need to go, we need to move forward. Uh, and, and even she's still coping with the fact that there was another humanity before her. And, yeah, so we know... So, obviously, she saw all of the stuff, too. We just didn't get to see her perspective from the episode last week. So we were always wondering, like, did she get to see it, did she not? But she did. She got to see it. She got to see it and stuff. And just seeing the way Ozpin was acting, just like being all devastated, crying, and everything, it it was just wow. Like I really love the emotional weight from this episode. There was a lot of tension building up, and now even everyone, even Crow and Ruby, were like you know, kind of questioning him a little bit. And I, I my Crow, like I said earlier was saying that my worst luck was meeting you. That really probably hurt at Ospin, you know, because knowing Crow's luck, it's not the best with semblance for being bad luck, and to go to where it is now, it's just, ouch, like... <laughs> Honestly, I think probably the most, like, um... What I didn't expect for the reaction was probably Quo, because, you know, he was always the one that was always behind Ospin's back at all at all times. He was a second right-hand man, and for him to say this, it's just, damn, I and this probably really hurt at Ospin to the point, like, you know, like we know now, is that he's just gone. We don't know where he went, he just inside in the back of Oscar's mind, and to what extent of when he's gone, we don't know. But we'll probably find out that out later. Uh, but then we go to the villains. It's been a while since we've seen the villains. It's been since 25. Uh, and we're going to see what they were up to after since the uh, Battle of Haven. And everyone is pretty much like... A f 
acts like a failure, even though they are a failure because of the sender and everything else like that. So, and also we're going to be Tyrion again, which has been like a volume since, because we didn't get to see him at all in volume 5, so it's really nice to see Tyrion again as being his old self, being kind of a prick to Emerald and everything, everyone else like that. Mercury's trying to calm Emerald down and everything else. Uh, try to be a voice of reason a little bit. Kind of weird seeing Mercury being like that for the villains. And then Hazel just being a bro and um, trying to take trying to take the loss to himself, telling Salem that he was the one that failed this whole ideal, even though it's not true. Because at this point, Salem knew that he was lying to, to her. So she goes off like this grim arms and everything else on to Hazel. Like, to the point where I thought this could have could have been the end of Hazel, but it's not. Uh, obviously, he does eventually get out after, like, Emma telling the truth to Salem that it was, in fact, Cinder that did it. Um, and, of course, we get a speech from the trailer and everything else like that. Uh, one thing I did like for the, for the trailer is that a lot of the shots that were shown, like, in the castle were actually from outside, which is... Because we got to get to see the entrance of the castle, we got to see it a whole lot, and um, that was a really nice like way to like hide stuff, like hide spoilers and stuff like that. So, yeah, and then I think after this, uh, I also want to talk a little bit more about what's the next big goal of like what country are we going to go to, what kingdom are we going to go to next, and. The first thing that uh, Salem says before learning the fact that Atlas is next, where Ospin is going, uh, she wanted to go to Vacuo. Okay, that's that's where she wanted to go. Like go to the next world, like, over there, and destroy that kingdom, basically. But then she finds so Vacuo is. I always kind of figured that Vacuo was going to be next, so that kind of gives it more confirmation, kind of like a little hint, hint of what's going to come in the future. So Vacuo is more than likely going to be what's next in store for us and after Atlas when that's all done and completed. Um, and then we go to, we go back to the movie and everyone else, we see the intro, we see another shot of the front trailer, we've been walking on the snow and stuff like that, and nothing really happens besides a little bit of conversation, a little bit of like, what do we do now, like, where do we go, because, like, you know, Austin is there to guide them to know what exactly we do, besides the fact that we need to get Atlas or August, in a way, because that's next. So they go meet up in this town, Low area, that's where, that's where they go. And then the episode kind of ends. Now, there was some interesting stuff from this town. It is the fact that this town is completely abandoned. And so, this would like, honestly, we're probably going to get another backstory here. Maybe a Team Stark backstory and stuff like that. So maybe Quill will probably like, answer a lot of questions. We'll probably get another, like, you know, exposition scene and stuff like that going on for the next week's. Or maybe future episodes. Uh, and then there was a little tunnel that kind of reminded me of the volume, the intro for old volume six, where the tentacle monsters come out and try to attack Ruby and everything. So what makes me believe that this is probably the same tunnel that something's going to happen in there. And now Salem, it really does seem like from Salem that she might do like go to Atlas herself and do the thing that she needs to do, like, succeed and stuff like that, like, get the job done herself, because, you know, her subjects failed her, so it's like, she's like, okay, I'm going to do it myself. Well, she doesn't actually say anything, like, if she's going to do it herself, but really gets the vibe that maybe she might go off and do it herself from now on, at least at least, at least for Atlas, Atlas anyway, anyway, to get the job done. So it makes me believe that since those, um... Technical arms, arms that, that went up to a hazel, hazel, you know, trying to grab me. Kind of reminded me of the opening a little bit with those technical arms. arms. They kind of look the same. So it really makes me believe, believe if Salem's going to go to this place, place and attack. Because we know that Hazel knows that uh, we're in Team Ruby and everyone is going is in August. So maybe Salem might find them there at that town and start attacking. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a maybe, maybe though, but that's kind of what I think might happen later on. But I'll get more in depth into like, the next predictions and stuff like that. But overall, yeah, yeah it's, it's a very short, short chapter of this week, so this review is really going to be short. But overall, it was an 
okay, okay chapter, chapter is what I expected it to be. Because we just got, got a big bomb show, the longest chapter in the series, excluding like Barney, Barney 3, because with the credits, credits is the longest, but taking out credits, this is the longest episode that we had for chapter 3. Uh, we got a lot of big bomb shows, it's kind of like a breather episode. So, yeah, yeah that's really what I expected it to be, this breather episode, chill, chill episode. Uh, until, until next week, until we get the, to the other crazy shit back going on. So, so yeah, yeah, overall, I'll give it like at least, and honestly, kind of an 8 out of 10, if anything, an 8 or 7 out of 10. It's about it's about it. it was good, but I kind of felt some things were a little unnecessary, a little bit. Like, it really, now, we're like, uh, Honestly, Honestly, the snow, snow part before they got, got to the town kind of felt a little bit unnecessary. They probably, would, they probably could have cut that, and uh, it, it would have been just fine. But they, they kept that in, and with the other talk and stuff from the trailer, they kept that, most of that in. So they, they, they probably could have cut that right there, and it would have been just fine. It was just some things that felt a little bit unnecessary, but it was fine. It was just a fine episode. Uh, really, it wasn't disappointed at, it at all, but there was a little little nitpicks here and there. there. But, but yeah, yeah, this, this has been Hot Test TV. Come to me with a like, like comment, and subscribe. Uh, more future music like these. I'll see you next time. Bye.